Hello, 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 everyone. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about changing the world and how to do it. This video was inspired in part by the video that other Joseph made a couple of weeks ago in which he proposed that there are, in some sense, only three ways to change the world. One is through technology, the other is through law, and the third is through culture. And that if you're making a substantial change in the world, that you're making it through one of those three avenues. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about another way to change the world, or better said, another way of thinking about how to change the world. Um, and you know, changing the world, pretty small topic. We should be able to wrap this up in about 30 seconds or so. So this lesson actually comes from a time when I was in high school. I went to a small charter high school in South Jordan called Paradigm High School. I actually went there with other Joseph, which is pretty wild if you think about it. And this was a charter school that had a special emphasis in leadership and civics, right? And so what we heard all day, all day, every day, was about, you know, you're going to be the future leaders of America. You need to go change the world. Go make a difference. And all of that is true and good as far as it goes. And I'm only kind of making fun of it because um, <clears throat> there is a way in which it's sort of arrogant and over the top, but it's also very necessary. Like we actually um, are remaking the world every day with the decisions we make and the thoughts we think and the things we say. So it, it's good to devote some time to thinking about, okay, like how exactly am I changing the world and how <laughs> exactly can I also make sure that I'm changing the world in a way that will actually make it better? So we were told all day, every day, you know, go change the world, and, and particularly that phrase, go make a difference, right? And I'll be coming back to that in a second. I also have brothers and sisters who went to another small charter school, actually not so small, I suppose, in Utah called American Preparatory Academy. And American Preparatory Academy shtick, sort of one of their philosophic pillars, was about how you need to be a builder. And there's even this famous poem that they absolutely love over there. Um, I saw them tearing a building down, a group of men in a busy town. With a ho-heave-ho -ho and a lusty yell, they swung a beam and a sidewall fell. And the poem goes on and talks about how someone came up to these workers and said, well, like, what are you doing here? And the foreman of the worker says, well, you know, we're just knocking things down. It doesn't take that much labor. It doesn't take that much um, intelligence. It doesn't take that much forethought. We're just wreckers. And the point of the poem is about how it's better to be a builder than somebody who tears things down which is also true as far as it goes. But with that particular phrase in mind about making a difference, I want to talk about a way in which it is uh, not true and which it does not go far enough. So fun fact about that phrase, make a difference. Some of you um, may be into math and some of you may even be good at math. I'm not very good at math, but um, I do know enough about math to know that a difference is actually something that is made after you subtract things, right? Mathematically speaking, the difference is the result of subtracting two numbers from each other. If you subtract 5 from 10, then what you are left with is 5, and that is the difference. So there's this very funny way in which, you know, all the teachers and administrators and so forth around me were saying, you know, go make a difference, go be a builder, things like that. And it occurred to me one day that actually, if you are going to, strictly speaking, make a difference, um, you actually need to remove things. You need to subtract things. Now that's a really interesting thought, and that is a really that is a completely different way of approaching the problem of changing the world than it is to try to build something or establish things. Right. So let's evaluate it on its merits. Now the first thing you might say is that, well, uh, one of the most important ways that we change the world is actually by adding things to the world. It's not by subtracting things. It's not by mathematically making a difference. It's by uh, mathematically making a sum, right? Um, we ourselves are added to the world. You know, when you're born, like here you are, you've been added to the world. Um, things like penicillin have been added to the world. The electrical grid has been added to the world. These are all pretty good things that have been added to the world. However, it's also the case that many of the most important changes that are made in the world are not made by adding things, but by subtracting things. And this is particularly true if you are trying to change your own life, trying to change your own way of being, the way you approach the world, the way you live in the world. It's not just about adding things, it's also about removing things. It's about removing things like bad habits, it's perhaps um, removing junk in your life, perhaps it's removing um, patterns of thought that are not serving you well. I think of particularly an example that's raised in the book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which I love. 
about a monkey caught in a trap. Apparently there's this way of trapping monkeys where you put rice into a hollow coconut husk. And that coconut husk, the hole in the husk, is small enough for a monkey to reach its hand into, but once it has grasped the rice, it cannot then pull its hand out of. And so the monkey essentially traps itself. Monkey hand goes in, monkey hand grabs rice, monkey hand now cannot pull out, and you can come along and collect the monkey at your leisure. Now, the crazy thing is that the monkey can escape that, you know, in theory, it can escape that trap very easily. You let go of the rice, you walk away, you are now a free monkey, just as you were 10 minutes ago before you stuck your hand inside the coconut. So why doesn't the monkey do that? And essentially, the monkey has a set of values and priorities related to that rice that are making it so that the monkey is not going to get what it really wants. It's going to get what it thinks it wants, it is not going to get what it really wants. That monkey has multiple values. One thing it values is its freedom, another thing it values is the rice. And what it needs to realize is that those two values have come into conflict with each other, and that it is time to um, not necessarily start adding new values, but it's actually time to start uh, pruning away values. It's time to start looking at one's values. It's time for the monkey to start looking at its own values and saying, you know, maybe this is a moment where I need to dispense, strip away with some of the value that I am attaching to this rice, and I need to start valuing a little bit more highly my freedom. So that is a case in which maybe it would be very good to uh, make a difference, to start subtracting things and specifically to subtract ways that the monkey is thinking about things and start subtracting or diminishing certain values that that monkey has in favor of other more important values. When I think of removing things, I also think of this, this famous, amazing line from the Tao Te Ching, which is that in the pursuit of knowledge, every day something is acquired. But in the pursuit of the Tao, in pursuit of the way, every day something is set aside. There's something very powerful and important about that in the sense that um, in order to develop as human beings, perhaps in order to develop as communities, um, it is going to be just as important for us to put some things aside, stop paying attention to them, stop doing them, stop prioritizing and valuing them in favor of other things, sure. But at the end of the day, to stop valuing and stop prioritizing some things, that that is going to be an important key to our personal development and perhaps also to our development as communities, societies, and nations. So that is our fun thought of the day about how to change the world. It's a different way of thinking about changing the world. It's a different way of thinking about changing yourself, one that I believe is very valuable. Um, if you have thoughts on that, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. And particularly, if you can think of examples, you know, either, uh, frankly, either ways that removing things is the right way to approach changing the world or changing yourself. Or, you know, uh, other cases where perhaps I might be mistaken or I might be off base or, you know, valuing some things uh, too highly or too lowly. Um, I would love to hear about that in the comments below. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Go make a difference. Start removing things from your life.